I've got a review today. It's a little bit off track from what I normally do, but it's going to be on some head tracking software. Before that, I just wanted to give a quick rundown on some of my software. I am running an AMD Ryzen 5950, 64 gigs of RAM. It's got a 3090 Ti in it. I've got on order everything to go to the 7950, and I'm going to put a 4090. Yeah, it's going to be a few bucks. Anyways, this is my little Marvel setup. I run three monitors. Show microphone. Got a Sony camera over here. Face cam from Elgato. Love Elgato stuff. I got some lights, different lights. A few video cards up there hanging around. Change the keyboards because my Razer keyboard wasn't working with this head tracking software we're going to talk about. But Razer Asus keyboard now, not my Razer Huntsman. Uh, Razer mouse. And for the gaming, I am running a, what is that? Oh, that's a Thrustmaster Warthog with the F18 joystick. That's my plane of choice and it's got the warthog um, throttle set up over there with some monster mounts and yeah I'm shooting this on a phone because I oh, I got a new razor seat love this seat and my other camera over there and everybody's probably gonna wonder why the hell is he doing it on a phone when he's got all these cameras and stuff <laughs> I kind of think in a couple of years, cameras are gonna be gone and phones are gonna be the way to go because the pictures are just so awesome. So we're gonna cut it out there and I'm gonna get on to the, this review of this um, new hardware that I have. See you in a second. Okay, so we're back. All right, one of the things that I recently came into and I probably wouldn't even be playing this digital combat simulation or you can use it with armor and a number of other games. It's head tracking software and hardware. Basically, it, I, don't know, I want to call it for me, it, it, it was it was completely a game changer. I mean, literally, you can sit in the cockpit of a plane or your race seat, and you can. I know there's a lot of people that know this stuff. Some people, you know, I didn't know about it until I seen it on a video. Thanks to Spud Knocker, Grim Reaper, those guys. I mean, they're a wealth of information. But basically, you can calibrate the software, and you can look around just like it's almost um, virtual reality, but I find it better because you still need to be able to see what's going on around you to be able, especially in a flight simulator, because you got so many buttons to click. Racing may be a little bit easier because you're keeping your hands right on that stick all the time, but we're not getting into that. What I first, what I first tried was something from a company and it's called Track IR. You get a camera. It's a, so yes, it's a camera basically with a magnet on here. I wish they would have made the magnet a little bit heavier duty, but basically this sits on top of your monitor like so okay you know it'll be angled more towards you and this will clip on a headset let me show you how that works okay so i'm back and i've got the headset so we're going to put this down because this is the new thing that i wanted to talk about with the track ir track ir5 pro or you get the regular one the regular you get the camera and you get like a springy type three prong thing you can stick on base basically a baseball cap that they send with it and it has reflectors on it and you can it sends back the signal to this and follows your head and it basically i've tried it and i think it works almost as good as this basically this comes with a you can charge the battery it's got a little 3.5 like a mic, uh, um, like a uh, headset would have, you know, an auxiliary 3.5 with a USB that plugs in and powers, it charges up, and you basically take this, put it on to your headset, get it lined up the way you want, and you calibrate it, and which we'll go over a little bit of that in a few minutes. And once it's calibrated, once you're in the game, you can literally sit there and I can look over and check my flaps, I can check uh, my throttle, I can lean in and it zooms in and I can hit buttons and press knobs up and pull handles and it's, it's, it's just off the hook. I, I, Never realized they had this stuff. I'm pretty amazed with it. So the Track IR is a, is a great piece of hardware. I mean, I, I, I couldn't play the game without it. I'd probably lose interest. 
So I was watching a video the other day and it was a guy doing a quick review and he did, he did a good job. He was talking about a new piece of hardware that he found and it's called the AMXY or AMXE. I think there's also a Z in there somewhere. I don't know where they get it. And it's a different setup. It frees you from having to put anything on a headset but for me i don't care because i i use a headset see now if you're if you're using virtual reality and stuff it might be a little bit different or if you don't like wearing a headset it would definitely be different because you'd have to wear the baseball cap with the reflectors he ordered his from china and it took him probably i think he said like three or four weeks his package external package it came in looked pretty banged up and i think he was a little worried about it but once he got down to the box it was fine and he did a quick little review on it and it, it was really good i really like to see some step-by-step -step reviews on it because there's so much information on track ir between all of the bigger websites again like like spud knocker and grim reaper's site that they, they can walk you right through calibrating this whole thing and they'll even give you private classes and stuff on doing things there was very little information on setting this up and how to calibrate it i seen one video with an asian gentleman i think he works for the company i actually spoke to him because i was having a problem with my keyboard uh, we did it through discord uh, messaging and my razor keyboard wouldn't work I, I couldn't when i was you when i use this i can't get external views when i'm in my plane it would the track I are, I can. I got it a little bit sorted out, but I'm still having a few little issues with it. I ended up changing keyboards, the Razer. I went over to an Asus and at least I can get 75%, but it's still a little issue, but I'm sure they'll work it out. Comes in a nice box. Now, if you ever want an easy way of opening the box, get a piece of tape, fold it over, stick it to the back and just bingo. So I already opened it obviously, but it comes with probably like a six foot cable power wire and it has USB-C on both sides, but they were generous enough and this was awesome. They gave an adapter. So this will go into your computer and you try to keep this stuff going directly. You don't want it on a hub with too much power being drawn because it, it may cause some glitches. So you'd want to go directly into your motherboard if you can. Comes with this and then you get your camera and it's really nice it's convenient and i, I kind of wish this had a better mountain system this was a really nice mountain system that comes with it it's kind of crazy the way it, it works but comes with a little lens protector and you can turn this once you take it off you can turn this lens and you can focus it you can get it nice and clear as you change distances from the camera obviously the focus changes let's keep this on there don't want to get it dirty okay so when i first started looking at this i was like this is crazy looking what the but basically there's your lip and i can even give you a better idea of how this works we're going to take a look at how it works in the game and to be honest with you until they maybe get the bugs out of this work on it a little bit more I still prefer this. It seems to work better for me. It's a little bit smoother. I know there's some calibration things you can do, but it's still a little buggy, like right out of the box, track I, uh, I had no glitches with any hardware, my mouse, my keyboard, nothing, no glitches. With this, right out of the box, I had glitches. Although they got right back to me and the guy was cool and we did talk and he's gonna be looking into it further. So say this is the top of your monitor. This is pretty wild. And this thing is really durable. You, you can bend it any way you want. And I do like the way the camera goes on here. So you wanna turn it this way. It has a couple of clip. You can either slide it in or you can snap it in. I prefer to slide it. And you can also, in the software, because if you turn this upside down, it'll turn your head upside down. So you can click the button to invert it that works out nice in case you know you don't want the cable looping all around and going everywhere so basically that's all you got to do and it latches right on it's nice and sturdy see the thing with the track i uh, i mean it's adjustable but this comes off very easy these two front arms swing in and out the back one up and down and the magnet moves back and forth so you got a lot of adjustment with it but it's just a magnet could definitely be stronger and i know they make more powerful magnets maybe they didn't because it interferes with the camera i don't know i mean i had a boss once that told me a magnet can stop a pacemaker and that was kind of funny because it really can't 
with the track I uh, once you get it mounted and placed where you want it, all you gotta do is kink your wire in there. And see, that's the problem I was having with it. That's what I meant. It, it just doesn't. So once it's on the monitor with this, once you plug it in, I may be doing a giveaway with one of these in the near future. Once you clip it in, nice little snap right in. You adjust it, you can bring it around if you're gonna run the cable that way or if you're gonna run it right down in back of your monitor. At least you wanna keep it nice and, and firm so it has two little notches where it clips right in. And then from there, you're off and running. So that's all I wanted to do was a quick little review, a little unboxing, and a little talk about this magnificent stuff that's totally new to me. I know some people have been using it for a long time and they're gonna be like, oh, that's, yeah, that's old, I've been doing that forever. But for me, this is really like cool stuff. And it's a, it, like I said, if you are into games, I don't know if Call of Duty will, hand, will do this. I know I seen Arma and another truck one, at least a hundred listed under this. 100 games, um, probably just as many for Track IR, but they give a, a whole listing. So basically, once you get it, you download your software, you install it, you calibrate it. We'll take a quick look at that in a few minutes, and you're off and running. Okay, hey, I'm back, back, back. All right, so here we are looking at the Track IR software. I haven't done a lot of um, precision calibration on this but basically i can give you a quick rundown on some of the features it does have so right over here yeah i made my mouse green and big so everybody can see it well it looks small on the other thing big to me anyway big mouse go big mouse um okay so there's two settings if you're going to be using the headpiece that goes on the hat that three little crazy wirely looking thing with the reflectors on it you click on the top notch what i'm looking at and if you're going to use the pro set like i have here see what i mean how it goes i guess you can flip this either way. you click over here on the bottom over here to the right hand side it has a motion control and speed it up and you can also control the smoothness of it speeding it up and all these things will swing it around see what you want to do is be able to turn your head okay first if you sit too far back see what's happening there that's telling me that parts of my head are out of the shot right here and right here so you want to be close enough like right there where everything should be in maybe even just a little bit closer because once you're in a jet or the plane see what i mean because you can literally tilt your head lean in and look lean back lean to the side so what you want to do is you want to be able to have it set so you can turn about 10 15 percent and get a 180 175 180 plenty and the same thing goes for the other side okay so this way you're all you're literally looking in the back seat but you're only moving your head a little bit so it's giving you the illusion that you're turning around so we have profiles over here which I haven't even done yet. There's titles. Oh, I guess, okay, that's all the games. Wow, there is a lot of game. Combined arms, that's armor. I don't see Call of Duty there. I know that's a biggie. I tell you, they should get that to work. And I don't play it, but I know it's a huge, huge, has a huge follow. And see all the F1 games. Okay, GTR. Oh my goodness, they have a lot of games. Okay, vehicle games, semi truck, truck thing, Tom Clancy, ship simulation. So the list goes on. Ton of stuff. Camera gives you all of your LED, true or false. Camera rotation. Zero, light filter threshold, and other things. Like I said, I haven't even messed with any of it. I haven't had to. I, it works fine right out of the box. So we're back to profile. Now you can customize your profile over here. Over here on these, in this area, you can pull these little dots and you can change things around. But the main thing is, is once you get into the game, you want to look directly at the center of your monitor. And down here in the corner, it says center. So if you're looking at your monitor, and it's right here before you start your game zero it in okay so now it's right where you want it over here you can change from display to camera view now what i need to do is get these dots down a little bit further well they don't really have to be but they should be because this will mess with your hud if you can have this middle dot pretty much lined up in the center of this cross that's the 240 line 
0 to 40, 480. If you have this middle dot pretty much lined up there and your two outer dots, that'll give you a better focus of your HUD. I've noticed in the game if when if I, I've gone in and I didn't line that up, the HUD, I could look all around the plane, that wasn't a problem, but my HUD, my heads up display, you couldn't see your altitude, you couldn't see your speed, it, it kind of got out of focus a little bit. Yeah, if you put your hands in front of it, you can mess it up, so... You don't want nothing in front of your face. But things in the background, ceiling fans, not, nothing's affected it. It's been fine. Lighting, glasses, no problemo. So the way that you would calibrate this, you drop it down. You see what I just did? I'm getting them dots pretty close. They're a little bit far off over there because we'll take a look at what happened right here. 3D view. Whammo. So now I've got to go back and i got to recenter. Look directly at the center. Okay. So now I've recentered it. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at camera view once more. I'm still over here. I want to bring, try to bring those three dots over a little bit more. And the way you would do that is by adjusting the software, which I think, as I said, I'm not a professional with this. Bear with me. Bear with me. So, yeah. Okay. You do that by, this is different. 0.7 I want that label pro decision I don't know what that really does I've got to read up on it now I did this before I figured out I can cut all this okay so I think I got it so basically the way you want to get these three dots where they belong I'll get them as close to possible because if you look at the lines you want to have it like right under the ear I don't know if you can see that in the video where the cross is on the head and the cross on the face so you go back to your camera view and this is how you move things around you have to adjust this up bring it in now I got it pretty close by by doing the adjustments on the side here that's about as good as I'm gonna get it so once you go back here 3d view you're gonna be out of line so you want to hit your center and bingo now you need to leave this running when you're in the game so again when you start this it should be in administration mode so i'm going to start the game up real quick and we'll take a quick look at how it works so you downsize it i'll cut all this other junk out you don't have to watch this whole startup thing Okay, so what I did is threw together a small map. It's a small little quick mission of a takeoff, a quick bombing if you want, and because I'm still just learning how to drop dummy bombs, and actually it's harder to do that than fire the missiles at the air to air. So I hope it's not too noisy in the game. It's nothing fancy. It's just a quick takeoff. A couple ships out there you can drop a few bombs on, fire the guns, and come back, but. This is just a quick look video. So, get my sound going. Must be going in the game. Okay, here we are. So you can see when you sit back right about here. Now, you can use your mouse cross to select certain things. I am using 83s and 82s there, I think. You can select mode this right here would be instant explosion bang bang boom so it's crossed out right now anyways because you really can't drop bombs when you're sitting on the runway another thing that you have is your nose steering your nose wheel steering you can go into high or low now i put the plane purposely on an angle so i could show you how that works select your nose steering button throttle up and it kind of turns you like right on a dime. And then from there you can use your regular rudders. And what's nice about it, look at that. I, I, I still need to get this a little smoother, but it looks pretty good. I mean, you want to get in there and read your stuff. Look at that. Beautiful. What a fun game. You got your mirrors. This is called a hot, a, a hot startup. You can see your brakes moving down there. I don't know if it's far behind. Maybe I got two things running in admin. All right, so here we are. Gonna throttle up. 
hold your nose brake down, hold your brakes down, throttle up to military idle, let loose, lift, push, afterburners, make little adjustments, pull back on the stick just a little, and she'll lift off on her own. These things pretty much fly themselves. You can have buttons set up for the, say if you want to get your wheels hooked up. So looking at the wheels there, I got it hooked up. There it goes. So your wheels go, laps go into automatic, and that's pretty much how it works. When you want to pause, you can go into your controls. Everything's right in there. Want to take a device out you want to add something in you can see like rod is once you get your head wrapped around it, it ain't too bad gotta go in and set to select all the guns and weapons very complicated when it comes to but well, even outside you can look around i put a fire back there at my base so i could see where the return because i didn't get to put waypoints in and we can go up straight let's do a roll got some bombs on it all right we're gonna finish it there and go back and look at the rest of the software okay so now we're in the aim oh yeah it is see aim xyz i don't know why they put that in there so literally you got a black and white camera looking at you here's your box you can go over to device or config you can double click on the screen and there's your pyramid. So basically, that's your nose. Tip of that pyramid. Your corners of your head, your chin. That's how it tracks you. So that looks like it. Jeez, I landed that pretty darn good. But taking it down, I didn't even adjust nothing. All right. So, again, this needs to stay running. Fire up your DCS. Cut all this out, and we'll get right to the flight part. So you can see, I'm going to put a headset on, but really, I could use speakers if I wanted to now. I'm running a 3090 Ti. Plenty of RAM. And so here we are, back in the jet. You can see it works a little differently. I know you're supposed to be able to lean in, get a little closer. Oh yeah, okay. I, I still think the track IR is a little bit more mature, but it does give a nice picture. Look, you can see the brakes moving. Heads up. Sometimes it just doesn't feel right. It's like you gotta be sitting, you can lean. Got it, your wing. Thing with this, I've gotta get it so I, I see sometimes see how, see what happens when I go straight? I gotta kinda like snap it in. Yeah, it's still it's gotta be calibrated. There we go. Zoom in. I got what the zoom button is. Inside, inside, outside, inside. It's funny when I stop flying. It seems to not want to uh, let me in and out of the plane. I mean, there's still a number of things I need to do. Okay, over here, you can pull over right handle. As you can see, I still have a lot of calibrations to do on this one. Definitely, never without the headset. Working good, it's just giving me this cockeyed look. You get the general idea, see what I mean? It still needs some maturing. It's not like right out of the box, like the track I have. I, I had no issues whatsoever. The HUD's way, way off. I'm moving a little bit too fast there. See, you definitely want to keep it. Definitely want to keep this thing is pissing me off. Now I'm in the wrong runway. See if I can get a takeoff from here. Straighten around. Uh, just a little sloppy. A little loose. Pull up. Pull up. Woo! <laughs> oh, shit. And that's how it all ends. Okay, folks. That was a horrible display of... of um, how this program should work but i definitely have some bugs to work out with it so i've got a lot of stuff to cut out of this video not as much with the track ir as with the um the aim x x y or y x or yeah x y z it definitely needs a little bit of tweaking so i've got to figure out what's going on with that but until next time everybody peace out